Hi, William here. Um, what are we doing today? Well, we're looking at Unit 17 of a Level 6 Diploma in Construction Site Management. And Unit 17 is Establishing Project Dimensional Control Criteria in the Workplace and has a credit value of 10. So it's a medium-sized unit, nothing much to worry about. So let's jump straight into the unit overview. What is this unit all, or, all about? Well, as construction managers, when it comes to establishing project dimensional control criteria in the workplace, we usually um, allocate that to our surveyors and site engineers. But as construction managers, the buck stops with us. So it is for us to check and to monitor and to make sure that the records are in place. So records, records, records. A construction manager is only as good as their records. Well, moving deeper into uh, the uh, understanding of this unit, as construction managers, do we check land surveys and planning position with build and foundation details at planning? I know that as a construction manager, when we're setting out and we've got the Oasis cabinet set it up on a major construction site, We've got our heads in the drawings and we're checking and we're checking and we're double checking to make sure everything um, within the project matches and correlates. So to that end, as construction managers, do we check the building drawings that sectional dimensions add up to the overall size dimensions? And what do we do if constru as construction managers if they don't? And do we include the client and the project designer in the decision-making process? And what is that decision-making process? Don't worry, we'll go through that. Do you, as a construction manager, check the package drawings, such as kitchens and bathrooms, in as much that they fit within the build drawings, the sizes of the room? And again, what do we do as construction managers if they don't fit? Do we make sure all stakeholders work continually to the latest drawing? And how do we ensure that that is the case? And furthermore, how do we set out accurately and set up datums and ensure that they are fixed, secure points of reference? And furthermore still, is our setting out equipment fit for purpose? And do we keep records of um, dimensional checks with setting out points with signatures and dates to hold those accountable for setting out accountable. I'm sure as construction managers you do. And now the task now is to evidence that with performance evidence, product evidence, records against the learning outcomes in this unit. For the candidate statements, please refer to the audio podcasts and when finding or uh, researching or putting together your product evidences, it's always good to match those product evidences with the stories or the candidate statements that you've put in uh, this unit to complete the knowledge criteria. Knowledge is what you know with examples and the product information is um, information of what you've done. So having mentioned the learning outcomes, let's have a look at those and I'll put, through, put forward a few suggestions for some product information. So let's just see how many learning outcomes there are. There are seven learning outcomes in all. They're not huge, but let's run through them. Number one, obtain relevant survey information Check that is up to date and accurate and resolve any problems. So for that you might want to produce a copy of a land survey or a site survey and an email trace of or an email correspondence of how you handled any issues that arose. The second. Two, correlate and interpret information on project work which is relevant to dimensional control. You might want to include in this unit a copy of a drawing register, package drawings compared with bill drawings, and again an email trail, RFIs uh, with site instructions and architect's instructions that go along where you may have found a dimensional error. We often do. Number three, 
ensure that variations are identified between the specified and the actual site dimensions. Record them accurately and circulate them to decision makers. You might find that after your, your engineer has set out for a building, it may be um, not enough room for you to move, put in a path of a specified size, or you've had to find you can't put in an access road uh, because the, the overall dimensions are too small. What do you do? So for that unit or for that learning outcome, you might want to put together an email trial, RFI, design instructions, architect's instructions, and perhaps a drawing register. So you can see that I'm more or less uh, advocating that you've got similar pieces of evidence for all the learning outcomes. So plan which pieces of evidence you're going to use before submitting them and choose the best pieces that you can use on multiple times. Fourth learning outcome. Ensure that reference points are suitably placed, accurate, clearly identified and protected from movement or removal. You might want to show a site plan showing boundaries, build lines and datum positions and heights. Number five, ensure dimensional control monitoring system, ensure a dimensional control monitoring system which will make sure the specified accuracy criteria will be met is established. So once all your datums are up um, and your surveys are up and your lines are up, do you check that they haven't been moved? So we could have a dimensional survey report and check records. Good to do that at least once a week. And number six, ensure that measuring and recording equipment is maintained to meet the specified accuracy criteria. Do you have calibration certificates for your levels? And of course there'll be the surveyor's check records is his notepad. And number seven, a record of any dimensional control information which may be of later use and store it securely. So here we're looking at the dimensional records written onto an as-built drawing, surveyor's notepad, which is then locked away and uh, passed on as part of the ONM manuals. Well that completes the overview and the introduction to this unit. I trust it's pointed you in the right direction. You may have uh, procedures, company procedures and practices that will can add to this or may be different. Please use your own and please within accordance with the evidence circle when you're writing and planning your candidate statements match them with the product evidence.